In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to all of you for this Feast Mass. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Francis Xavier, the patron saint of missionaries. He was a great missionary. In the 10th year of his missionary travel, he brought many persons close to Jesus. Though he died at a rel relatively young age of 46, he had done much in spreading the values of Christ and was closely connected to the people who we served. When we are separated from the lives of our people, their pains and struggles and sufferings, we lose touch with them. We need to move with the people to know their heartfelt pains and struggles at work, in marriage and in family life. This was what St. Paul said about himself, So though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of every one, so as to win as many as I could. For the weak I made myself weak, I made myself all things to all men, in order to save some at any cost, and I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessing. Like St. Paul, St. Francis Xavier, too, reached out to all those he came in contact with. This was possibly since he remained closely united to Jesus in order to each of us to succeed in this endeavor. Let us draw fruits from today's theme, which is by walking in the footsteps of St. Francis Xavier, let us bear witnesses to Christ. So as we participate in today's Eucharist celebration, let us pray for the grace that we may be willing to follow the footsteps of St. Francis Xavier and thereby become genuine witnesses of Jesus to all those we come in contact with. And so let us prepare our hearts to celebrate this Mass in a worthy manner. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, 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 Christ,
Let us pray. O compassionate and merciful Lord, who opened a door to Asia for Saint Francis Xavier to preach the gospel, send us even to the ends of the earth that we may bring to its fullness the joy of the Church, our Mother. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Again, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because you have not warned him. He shall die for his sin, and his righteous deeds, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning 
and you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall be singing the responsorial psalm. Hallelujah. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. A response. Go out into the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. A response. Go out into the whole world, proclaim the good news. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with the commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my preaching, I make the gospel free of charge, not making full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win the more. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly rise for the acclamation. disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized 
will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended it. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, God can transform anybody. God can work wonders through his chosen instruments. When the Catholic Church was under attack during the 16th century, God raised up inspiring men and women to support, to strengthen the Church. Teresa of Avila, Angela Merici, Ignatius of Loyola, John of the Cross, Charles Borromeo, Philip Neri, Gonzalo Garcia, and many more. One of those inspiring witnesses was Saint Francis Xavier. It was not easy for Francis Xavier to make that choice to be Christ's witness. He came from a rich and influential family in Navarre, now Spain. He was young, handsome, sportsman. He was a man who was after the ladies in the University of Paris. He had everything. It was all laid out before him. Just when he thought he was going to have a nice, cushy, comfortable life, God intervened. In his university college room, there was this man, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who troubled Xavier. He kept asking him three questions. What have I done for Christ? What am I doing for Christ? What must I do for Christ? And Ignatius did not stop there. The young, ambitious Xavier was troubled. Ignatius used Jesus' words to probe. What does it profit you, Francis, if you gain the whole world and suffer the loss of your soul? Francis protested. But Ignatius, I'm too ambitious to be a priest. And Ignatius countered, Francis, you are not ambitious enough. You must be able to look beyond yourself to embrace the whole world and all God's people. Are you sufficiently ambitious to move beyond your selfish self and to serve others? Gradually, gradually, Xavier's dream changed. Xavier felt this imperative to be Christ's witness, to preach the good news to the whole world. He heard Christ's silent voice in his heart. Go out to the whole world and tell people that God loves them. In a way, Xavier could have said like St. Paul's words in today's second reading, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. There are people to be saved. And what a marvelous witness 
Xavier became. As he traveled and worked through different lands, he kept writing letters back to people in Europe. Xavier's letters did as much good in Europe as his preaching did in Asia. People were amazed. Who is this man who is on fire with the love of Jesus Christ? And young people said, I want to be a missionary. I also want to go to foreign lands and to spread the message of Christ's love to all people. Through his letters, people came to know about Xavier's journeys and his works among people in Goa, South India, Indonesia, the Philippines, and as far away as Japan. From 1542 to 1552, just 10 years, and one third of those years was spent sailing on these little ships. From his letters, people learned of his strong faith in God, the many challenges he encountered, and his perseverance, his grit. Many challenges. Those were slow sailing days on small ships. There were storms and there were pirates. Xavier struggled with languages. He went to so many different places. He had summarized the catechism and then he asked somebody to translate it into the local language, the vernacular. He learned that by heart, whatever sounds he could follow. And he went to some public places or outside the temples and he preached that catechism in the local language, which he did not follow at all. They laughed at him. They insulted him, but he persevered. He did not give up. And slowly, slowly, people saw the genuineness of this man and they got transformed. They followed him. He took a little bell and went around the streets of different villages and little children followed him. They saw this as an authentic person. There were struggles. Yes, he felt lonely. Yes, he missed his Jesuit companions. From their letters, he had cut out the signatures of his Jesuit companions and of St. Ignatius of Loyola, and he kept these signatures close to his heart. Through all his many struggles, he continued to share Christ's message of love through people of different lands. His one dream was to go to China and to preach Christ to the people of China, but he did not. He died on a deserted island, Sanxian, facing China on 3rd December, 1552. And Xavier was just 46 years old. For his inspiring life and witness, the church named St. Francis Xavier as patron saint of missionaries. Wonderful. What would this patron saint of missionaries tell all of us today? One, allow Christ's love to transform us. Let us be filled with the fire of the love of Jesus Christ for all people. Two, witness that love of Christ in our dealings with others. By our loving deeds, may people come to know Christ. Three, during this COVID pandemic, we can be prophetic witnesses and stand with people. Stand with Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, Jains, Sikhs. Stand with the people who are trying to protect the people and environment in Mole, South Goa. Stand with the farmers who are protesting because their rights are being taken away from them. They are protesting in Delhi. Stand with Father Stan Swami and the other political prisoners, those who have been fighting for the rights of tribals, Dalits, and the downtrodden. Stand with the voiceless. And for young people, 
don't be afraid to say yes to God. He calls the weak and makes you strong. God, when God calls you, He will give you enough grace to fulfill His mission. My dear sisters and brothers, by walking in the footsteps of Saint Francis Xavier, I'm so going so sad. Let us become true witnesses of Christ's love. Amen. Kindly stand and let us offer our prayers to God. For the leaders of the church, that following in the footsteps of St. Francis Xavier, they may be genuine witnesses of Jesus and exemplary models for the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation, that recognizing and acknowledging the legitimate needs of their people, they may help safeguard the rights of the poor and those on the periphery of our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought about untold suffering, pain and fear, that through the intercession of St. Francis Saviour, God may heal and protect them and be their source of consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those of us who are celebrating the feast of St. Francis Saviour, just like St. Francis Saviour, we too may continue to be effective witnesses for Jesus to all those we come in contact with. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. I'd like to make a special prayer for all the Jesuit family members who have given their sons to join the Society of Jesus following in the footsteps of St. Francis Xavier. We do many works in the Goa province and around the world, but we cannot do these alone, and there are so many good collaborators who work with us. We pray for them and their families. And again, there are so many good people around the world, and especially here in this province, in the state of Goa, people who are our benefactors, who pray for us and support us in our missions, and we remember them too. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and the health authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. On this day of joy, on this day of hope, we've come to you in love, oh Lord. On this day of joy, on this day of hope, we've come to you. 
sisters and brothers that these are offerings may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church let us pray take Lord receive the gifts we offer you and set our hearts on fire with the apostolic zeal that sustained st. Francis in proclaiming your gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you called Saint Francis, a son of the emerging society of Jesus, and set his heart on fire with love for you and zeal for souls, so that heedless of danger, hardship, and labor, he would undertake countless journeys, would proclaim the gospel to many peoples, and by initiating them into the saving mysteries, would join them to your holy people. Through Christ the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with the exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, the clergy and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Francis Xavier, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Francis Xavier took the message of the gospel seriously, and he wanted to build up God's kingdom, God's family around the world, for people of all faiths, all children of one God. Now, let us pray that same prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who called Francis Xavier to be his witness in this world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof. roof. But, but only say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who by your blood have purchased us for God from every tribe and tongue, from every people and nation, we humbly pray on this feast of St. Francis Xavier that all be gathered together at the, greatest, at the great banquet in your Father's kingdom, the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. First and foremost, I would like to thank God, our Father, who has made it possible for us throughout the Novena and Feast to be very calm and cool. We know that we would like to be here in great numbers, but this year we were not able to come here. However, he has made it possible through cyberspace to bring the Mass right to where you are. And for this, we thank him. We thank Father Roland Coelho, who celebrated this Mass in English for all of us. He's the provincial of the Goa province. And St. Francis Xavier was the first provincial of the Goa province. And so there's a kind of link that we have with him. So I want to thank you, Father, for being here and for everything that has happened. I'd like to thank all who are doing different kinds of services to make this Mass possible for you. Those who are working behind the scene, the sacristy, those who have prepared the altar, those who have done the readings today, the singers, the AE media, and so many others who are making it possible for you to see the Mass on various YouTube channels and TVs. Today we especially prayed and right through for all the COVID patients, those who have died and those who are still suffering. We pray that God may take this away from us, but we are also grateful that through this many things have happened. We thank God for everything that God has seen to by making things better for us. Tomorrow, the masses will be at 7 and 8. For these masses now, you can participate. You have to call us on 9075-212942. This will also be available to you in other places. You can call us and then book your uh, place for the mass. If it gets full, 100 seats are there, and after that, we can take for the next mass. And if it is exceeding even that, then we will be able to have another Mass for you. Veneration will be from 9 to 4 tomorrow. Today, the whole day, there will be a veneration. Now, during the High Mass, which is at 10.30, the uh, main celebrant will be the Archbishop of Goa, Archbishop Philip Neri Farrao. And along with him will be the uh, Emeritus Bishop Alex. With him will be many others concelebrating. For this Mass, we are having a good sort of uh, representation from the entire diocese. One member from each uh, parish, and so there will be 160 of them, including all the invitees. So we have made arrangements for this. We thank all those who have in various ways helped us right through to make the Mass a reality for you to come to your homes. And now, let us pray the prayer of St. Francis Xavier that he may intercede for us. Before we end, I would also like to wish everyone a happy feast of St. Francis Xavier. O devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. Impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death, proclaiming the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now, we ask your intercession for ourselves.
We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything, together with you, we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, Father Patricio has thanked everyone. It's my duty to thank my elder brother who helps people to walk in the footsteps of Francis Xavier and to become witnesses of Christ's message of love to other people. Father Patricio, thank you very much. You and your team do wonderful work here. And despite the challenges of the COVID situation, you have been able to take this Eucharistic celebration, masses and devotions to the people's homes. I'm grateful for all that you do. I have three young men at the altar with me this morning. They are deacons, Deacon Lindsay, Deacon Minoy, and Deacon Nigel. They will be ordained on the 30th of December and become priests like Francis Xavier. Please do pray for them as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wish you all a very happy feast. Sure.